What's up guys, today I thought it'd be cool to do a what's in my camera bag video. Um, I've been shooting video for almost a year now um, with my setup that I have now. Um, I thought it'd be cool to show you guys the gear that I use so that you can maybe make better decisions in what gear to buy for yourself and maybe learn what's going to suit your needs better than what you already have or maybe you're looking to buy gear and uh, hopefully this will just help you find out what suits your needs best. So first of all, I shoot on a Canon Rebel SL2. I got this this past December before the Canon Rebel SL3 came out and I do really love the camera. I probably would have gotten the SL3 if it had been out at the time, but I love the SL2. It has great in-camera autofocus as you can see right now. I'm coming in and out. It's staying in focus. As far as the video quality goes, um, this camera has great in-camera colors, which I really like. Canon is kind of known for that. You know, starting out, you probably don't want to spend a lot of time color grading. Color grading is a big thing to learn in itself. So having a camera that shoots great color, you know, straight out of camera is awesome starting out. This camera also shoots 1080 at 60 frames per second, which means you can slow it down to 24 frames per second in post and create slow motion. As far as lenses go, uh, when I got my camera, I got it with the kit lens, which is the Canon 18-55. to This is a decent lens if you're starting out. I really am not a huge fan of the way the aperture works. It's a minimum aperture of 4, which isn't very low in itself, but if you zoom the lens in, it goes up to 5.6, so you're not getting a very shallow depth of field with this lens. It's not going to look as professional. However, I do think it's a great lens for starting off. And while I'm talking about this lens, I have the KNF variable ND filter for it. This is like a $25 ND filter, and honestly, you can't beat it for the price. So if you do use the kit lens, I would recommend the KNF filter. So the other Canon lens that I own is the 75-300. I would not recommend this lens. It, uh, it's just dull. You zoom into 300, it goes up to a 5.6 aperture instead of a 4, just like the kit lens does. Yeah, it's just not, it's only like a $75 lens. You really get what you pay for. I would not recommend going with this. However, I will say I've gotten some really good pictures of the moon with this that I wouldn't have been able to get without it, um, especially during the eclipse. I wouldn't have been able to get some good pictures of the moon without this lens. So, you know, it did its job and uh, I mean, I don't regret getting it, but you get what you pay for. All right, so I've switched lenses to the 18-55, to so you can kind of see the difference in quality between this and my new lens. This is the lens that I use now. This is the Sigma 17-50. to um, It's a 2.8 aperture, and it's a constant aperture, which means it's not going to go up when you zoom in, um, which is awesome. So, you know, you can be filming at 2.8, you know, getting a nice wide angle shot, or you can zoom on into 50, and all of a sudden you got yourself a good B-roll lens, because you, you got that tighter focal length and a shallow depth of field. This lens is amazing for the price. I think it was like $300. The only thing I don't like about it is the loud autofocus. When it's autofocusing, it's actually physically moving this ring, and it makes, uh, it makes some noise while it's doing it. So if you have a microphone on top of your camera, it's gonna it's gonna come through into that audio so that that's kind of a bummer but like right now I'm recording external audio and I just have the mic set up up here so it's not a problem usually it's not a problem it's like the one place that the kit lens outshines this but I would highly recommend if you're starting out to skip the kit lens and go straight to this if you can afford it the kit lens will not grow with you I've only been shooting video for less than a year now and now that I'm doing it professionally, I'm already not using the kit lens anymore. However, if you go straight to this, this is gonna grow with you. You're gonna use this longer, and you're gonna be able to do way more with this, and you're gonna get way more quality out of your camera. So I definitely re recommend this over the kit lens. Um, it's a great lens so far, I love it, and like I say, the autofocus is the only thing I really don't like about it. So also, uh, the other thing I like about this is... Hey, Emma! Can you hear that piano? Can you hear that? That's gonna ruin my audio if you can hear that. Hang on just a second. Hey Emma! Yeah? I'm trying to shoot a video. Could you like pause on that for a little bit? <sighs> Took care of that. Oh man. All right, moving on to, sta to my stabilizers. Um, you hear that tractor? Everybody just wants to ruin my audio today. 
Okay, so moving on to my stabilizers. This is the Flycam Red King. Uh, and this thing costs about $200. Now the company Glidecam, which is the name brand company for Steadicam stabilizers, they make a version of this that is $800. And this is... Seriously. I'm just gonna go with my lav mic. I'm gonna... Yeah. So this is the Purple Panda lav mic. Um, it's like a $25 mic. As you can tell, it isolates the audio a lot better. You can either wire it straight to the camera so it'll be directly linked to your video file or you can plug it into your phone and then you can kind of turn it into a wireless mic but then you're gonna have to sync it up in post which I don't have time to do right now so I'm just, you know, plugging it in. So I think I'm gonna put it on now and uh, because he's still on the tractor out there and give you a review of the shotgun mic that I'm using which you probably don't have the best impression of right now after hearing all that background noise. But, all right, so this is the Tackstar shotgun mic. This is a $25 shotgun mic. And look it up for yourself. There are videos comparing this to the $300 Rode VideoMic Pro. It's a great microphone. I've used it for a ton of different things. It's very versatile, versatile, versatile. I'm not sure, versatile, versatile. I don't know, it's very, usable in a lot of different scenarios. I have done a video comparing the shotgun mic to the Purple Panda. So if you want to go watch that, you can see more in depth how the audio works and everything like that. Uh, this does have great audio and you know, just cause it does record the sound of a tractor in the background does not mean it's a bad mic, I promise. Anyways, it's a great mic and uh, I've used it a lot and I love it, so. All right. <sighs> I got distracted. But this is the Flycam Red King. It comes in at $600 less than the name brand, which is the Glidecam. Um, what I really love about it is this adjustable head. It's got these knobs for the, the different axes, and you can adjust them real easy once you put your camera on there to go left to right or front to back to balance it super quick. So I love this thing. And what I love about this stabilizer is that it's gonna grow with you. So. If I get a bigger camera, it's still gonna support that because it was made for heavy cameras. Like the max weight on this thing is like a 15 pound camera. It's definitely made for having bigger cameras on it. So it's gonna grow with you, which I think is really important in, uh, in any gear that you're looking at buying is that it, is, is it gonna grow with you? Um, so anyways, just, just keep that in mind when you're buying gear. And this is a great stabilizer. I'm trying to figure out what I haven't reviewed because I got all this stuff on my desk now. A lot of this has already come out of it and I've already reviewed it. This is my intervalometer that allows me to take time lapses of the stars. You just set how often you want it to take a picture and uh, it does the rest for you. So that's a nice little tool there. I've got a GoPro. I don't use this GoPro very much. This was actually my dad's GoPro. It's a Hero 4, so it's not one of the newer GoPros. I'm not a fan of the GoPro look, but I did use it a lot in the hurricane a while back to get some footage where I couldn't you know, get footage with my regular camera because obviously it was hurricane, it was storming, my camera would get wet. Extra batteries and a charger for the SL2. That's for the GoPro. Dead cap for the mic. Got this little guy, this is a ESDDI recording light. So this thing is bicolor. You can adjust the temperature of the, of the color of the light. So that's nice. It's at its brightest right now, which obviously you can't see a whole lot because it's daytime and I've got light coming in. But this is a very, a nice bright little light and it was only like $40, so I do recommend this little light. All right, as far as editing goes, I use the Dell G7 gaming laptop. And I got this laptop just, I mean, less than a month ago, so I don't have a ton of experience with it. I love how easy it is to replace things in it. The first thing I did was upgrade to the RAM and all I had to do was pull that one screw out of the back and the whole back popped off. Um, you can replace the RAM in it. You can add extra SSD. Um, you can replace a lot of stuff in it. So it's just, this is, you know, once again, this is a piece of gear that's gonna grow with you. So um, that's one of the main things I liked about it when I bought it. Great laptop. Oh, ow. 
this is a five in one reflector I use. Um, it does pop out and hit you in the face, just keep that in mind. It opens up and on the inside, there's a diffuser. So it's got, you know, that surface to reflect on, a white surface to reflect on, silver surface, black surface, and a diffuser. So that's why it's five in one. So it's a super handy tool to have whenever you're shooting anything because if you just need a little uh, a little fill light or something to bounce then you can do that with this you guys have no idea how much of a wreck my room is now this is the manfrotto five in one tripod um i don't think they make this model anymore but i do definitely recommend it it's a great tripod it has a fluid head on it so you can get some really really smooth shots with just the tripod before i had this tripod i thought tripods were just to get static shots but this thing changes the game you can get some really good shots with this and they're going to be really smooth and stable this was actually given to me i didn't pay for this but i do recommend getting a tripod with a fluid head it's a great tool and i use this all the time and i would have had to buy one if it wasn't given to me let me make sure i didn't miss anything oh oh for editing, I use these Blackweb headphones. These are Bluetooth headphones, uh, but they do have a cord that comes with them. They come in this nice little hard case, and they're really good sound quality, and they're a great price. I think I only paid like $40 for them. All right. I think that's it. So uh, thank you guys for watching, and the link to my kit account is in the description. You can go there and you'll see all my gear recommendations. Um, I'll try to make sure they're all on there because there's kind of a lot and I'll probably forget some of them. But thank you guys for watching. If you haven't subscribed and you support what I'm doing, please hit the subscribe button. That really helps me out. And uh, I'll see you in the next video.